So thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Bertrand Young. I'm the Director of Business Development for Curio. So thank you for joining today. Uh, just to give you guys some background on who I am, uh, I uh, after grad school, I went to BioLegend uh, to work in business development. And I was responsible for uh, in licensing SightSeek into the company and then building that uh, product line and, and all the panels that went along with that and, and all the products. And then earlier last year, I joined a company called Spatial Genomics that was commercializing Seekfish. And so I'm very familiar with the fish-based technologies. And then earlier this year in April, I joined Curio. So very happy to be here. Um, so, you know, we have a great product to go over today that we're making available um, to people. And what it is, is a whole transcriptome high resolution spatial sequencing platform. So a little bit about the company. We're a life sciences tool provider, um, pretty young. We were founded in February of 2021 and headquartered in Palo Alto. Uh, it's really great group of seasoned industry and academic leaders that have had a lot of experience in single cell genomics and molecular counting. And this group of people have come together and try to really create a, a robust spatial genomics platform for the public based on um, technology out of the Broad Institute called SlideSeq. Um, our mission in general is to provide really robust and um, great spatial genomics solutions that are at high resolution. And we really want to lower the barrier of entry uh, for people to access this new technology. And I'm sure many of you are very familiar with why we do spatial, but just for those of you who aren't, um, you know, in the past with the advent of unbiased RNA sequencing, people were able to look at bulk samples, taking you know, biopsies and crushing up the, the tissue and extracting RNA. Uh, but they were really missing a, a critical piece of information, which was what does that um, sample entail? Like what, what are the populations of cells? Uh, there really wasn't a way to tell because it was just an average uh, expression profile for that population. And so, you know, with the invention and, and implementation of single cell several years ago, uh, this is now possible. But again, it was still missing a key uh, piece of information, which is where were the locations of all those cells in those populations. And so in the last few years, it's been an explosion in uh, new spatial technologies, as I'm sure many of you are aware, where now we can measure molecular entities in a spatial context. <clears throat> um, and so even though there's been a lot of uh, these new technologies coming online, uh, there still have been quite a few challenges that uh, have remained. And I've just listed a few of the major ones uh, here, but one of the main ones is there just seems to be some trade-off between resolution and the number of targets where the, and there doesn't really seem to be a technology yet that uh, can do both at the same time reliably and robustly. A lot of times also the, the workflows can be cumbersome um, so that really prevents the ease of implementation into many uh, institutions and coral labs where it's not really amenable to high throughput or atlasing projects where you really need to pump out data very quickly. And a lot of times there is the need for assay optimization for different tissues for various reasons. And along with that, there can be very high assay to assay variability. One of the main things that is preventing a lot of broad ado adoption of these uh, technologies is also the existence of very expensive capital equipment that may need to be uh, purchased up front in order to use um, a lot of these technologies. And so what we're trying to do is address all of these uh, challenges and to make a product that, and to release a product that um, is easy for people to use and doesn't and fits right into current pipelines, current sequencing and, and single cell pipelines. And so we have we are introducing the Curio Seeker Kit, which is a whole transcriptome high resolution spatial uh, spatial analysis tool. And these are some of the features or important features of the product. The resolution is ten micron. 
And the uh, and this is enabled by 10 micron beads, which are randomly placed on a, a tile or an area that we call a tile. And this tile is three by three millimeters. Uh, the, the plexity is whole transcriptome. Uh, we do have oligos on the surface of the beads that have poly T on the ends that will capture in an unbiased manner all the mRNA with poly A and poly A tails. Um, we don't require any specialized hardware, so you don't need to purchase any instrumentation up front. This fits right into your single cell analysis pipeline. Um, the only thing, a uh, single analysis pipeline. So the uh, all you'll need really is a PCR machine, tape station, and sequencer. There's no peripherals, no accessories that you'll need in addition to that. Sample types, we currently support fresh frozen tissues. A lot of people ask us if we support FFPE, and we are working on that, but there isn't a timeline right now for when that will be available. Throughput um, is really user defined and highly depends on how comfortable you are with current, uh, currently existing single cell pipelines or workflows and uh, or genomics workflows. Generally, if you're very familiar with them, you can do quite a lot of samples at once for, uh, with one person. Uh, we have some customers that can do up to 20 samples in, in one go. Uh, if you're less comfortable with the assay, uh, even if you have no experience, the assay is easy enough that you should be able to at least run one or two at a time until you get more familiar with it. Uh, in my case, personally, um, the first time I ran this assay, obviously I've had a lot of experience in single cell when I was at Biologen, but you know I was able to run six at, at once pretty comfortably. Um, so it wasn't too much of an issue and the results were, were great. The workflow itself is eight hours with about two and a half hours of hands-on time. Uh, the rest of the time is mostly just incubations on heat blocks or uh, waiting for the PCR machine to run. As for software, we do have a dedicated primary analysis uh, pipeline that's available for installation locally on your HPC or, or whatever you're using for analysis. And what this software does is, is basically convert the FASTQ to matrix files. So it will take your FASTQ along with the text file for that particular tile with all the spatial barcode locations, and it'll spit out a, an HTML, HTML report with some QC information um, and some basic UMAP uh, visualizations and top 10 differentially expressed genes. Um, but as well as a Surat file output, if you decide to use Surat for your secondary analysis, but also a generic um, matrix file if you have a secondary pipeline that you want to use um, uh, on your own. <clears throat> so this is the actual product. Um, just on the left, you see the reagents and the tiles in the pouch. Um, so we have a really robust platform uh, we really want to make it easy for the customer to use, and so we have a, a rigorous manufacturing pipeline, extensive product testing, and QC. Um, if you remember on my last slide, I did say that all the, the 10 micron beads are randomly placed on each tile. Um, so what that means is that during our manufacturing process, we actually have to uh, index or sequence all those spatial barcodes up front so that the customer doesn't have to, right? So that's very important because um, we don't want the customer to waste time trying to do that because it's very uh, labor intensive for, for everybody else to do. But we have a process internally that can do that pretty easily. And so in the kit that we send you, um, you'll get the spatially indexed tiles and the reagents, but we'll also email you or send you the text files with the actual bead barcodes and spatial locations. And you'll just use those text files as input into the the primary analysis uh, pipeline that we have. So on the right, you'll see the actual product. Um, in the middle, there is a, a white patch which contains all the 10 micron beads in a three by three area, three by three millimeter area. And there are about 80,000 uh, beads in that small patch of, um, in that small patch. And those beads are mounted on a glass backing uh, and that glass, uh, that piece of glass is actually mounted on a, a blue piece of tape that isn't very sticky, it's kind of um, 
you know, post-it level sticky notes, but it's just meant to prevent the tile from moving around too much while you're mounting the tissue. And that blue piece of tape is mounted in this white plastic cartridge that's about the size of you know, your normal slide. And what you'll do is you put that into the cryostat ahead of time to come to the same temperature as your um, tissue block. And I'm just going to show you an example of how to mount your tissue. I'm going to skip to the middle. But basically, there's a 10 micron section for reference. This is a a mouse brain, whole mouse brain. And it is larger than the actual tile area, which is not a, a big deal. Um, all you'll need to do is position it over the tile in whichever area you want to look at. Um, and it's easy because it's at the same temperature as your um, tissue block. And you know, well, your, your tile is at the same temperature, so it won't melt preemptively. Um, and so you just move it over the tile to wherever you want it within the tissue. And once it's in position, you just pick it up and melt it with your finger. Right. So it's pretty easy. Um, what you'll do after this is if you are sectioning multiple tissues, you can put this back in the shipper that came with the tile um, and keep it in the cryostat sealed so it doesn't evaporate too much while you're sectioning other tissues. And you can also keep it up to you know, two or three days in the minus 80 if you happen to section this on Friday, you want to process it on Monday, or if you're sectioning a bunch of tissues um, up front before you process them all at the same time. Oops. And what you'll do after mounting the tissue on the tile is you'll uh, take a pair of tweezers or forceps and you'll peel that uh, glass tile off of the blue tape and put it directly into an Eppendorf tube with hybridization buffer. And it'll sit there for about 15 minutes um, to bind. And then you'll put it in an RT mix in, in the tube as well. And then you'll add some tissue digestion buffer after that to completely digest the tissue and get into solution. And that may involve some pipetting up and down to just get the tissue completely dissolved. But what that does is allows you to have access to the beads. And so you'll use your pipette to squirt the buffer against the beads on the tile, and they'll pretty easily come off at that point. And then what you'll do is you'll take that glass piece um, out of the tube, and the rest of the protocol is just centrifuge uh, uh, spin downs of the beads, washing, um, and it'll be just in Eppendorf tubes or PCR tubes for the rest of the protocol. So very straightforward, um, not a lot of manipulation on the customer's part. Uh, and what you'll expect is this type of data. So um, here I'm just showing the total UMI counts for various beads on the tile. And the number of UMIs that you'll um, get per bead will vary quite a bit depending on the tissue um, and where you are within the tissue. Um, so at least in this case, you know, there are certain areas without cell bodies and certain areas that do have a lot of cell bodies. And then you'll have tissues that are very transcriptionally active. And so you'll, you'll see a lot more capture per bead. But in this particular case of the hippocampus and the mouse, you're seeing you know, six to seven thousand UMIs per bead, and this equates to about a thousand to two thousand genes per bead. And um, across the whole tile, if it's completely loaded, in this case, you're getting about eighteen to twenty thousand genes in total. If you take it through secondary analysis pipelines, you can look at genes individually pretty easily. Uh, you get good signal to noise, um, and you, know, it, you can very clearly see structures within the tissue. And one thing, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because uh, the main point here is that I just want to let you guys know that there's no optimization that you'll need for any particular tissue. It's the same exact protocol um, for whatever tissue you're doing in human, mouse. Um, we've had some people do planaria, zebrafish, any species. We've had people do chicken. Uh, and so you don't have to worry too much about optimizing this uh, for whatever projects you're working on. And this is just an example of mouse liver, looking at various genes, and mouse kidney, um, good capture, and again, looking at various individual genes within the kidney. 
Um, so like I mentioned earlier, this commercial uh, uh, product is uh, based off the SlideSeq V2 technology from the Broad Institute. We have internalized this and improved upon it quite a bit uh, just to make it more robust and easier for people to use. Um, and uh, most people have reacted very positively to um, the kits that we have sent out to people already. Thank you.